Let me, uh, let me get this out of the way real quick, answer your first question. I am not a student that's graduating today. I am the student pastor here for those who have not met me yet. My name is Tim Heller. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad I have the, the honor and the privilege to be up here with this, with this morning with you guys. Um, I want to start by sharing a story. Uh, about 11 years ago in 2008, um, the Summer Olympics was held in Beijing. I don't know if you guys remember that. It was the one with the big bird's nest stadium. And the Summer Olympics of 2008 was a pretty cool Olympics. Um, but one of the, the two stories that came from the two men that kind of made up all the stories of the 2008 Olympics was Michael Phelps and Usain Bolt. You guys know who those are? Amen. So Michael Phelps was a U.S. swimmer who destroyed the records. He had about, he had about eight gold medals that summer. And I think one of, the, one of the swimming events he won by .01 of a second to, end, to win the 100 butterfly. And the other man was Usain Bolt. He literally ran away with the competition. He broke the, the world record in the 100 and 200 meter. Uh, when I was watching it, I didn't think at the time that people could run that fast. And he was out there running faster. It was looked like he was jogging out there compared to the other competitions. But when I thought about this this morning, there was another third story that came out of that that I read about in 2008 in the Summer Olympics. And it was connected to the Summer Olympics and it was about the United States that some of us may not even remember at all. It was the four by 100 relay, the men's and women's four by 100 relay. Uh, in this relay, the United States has been dominant for years. From the beginning of the modern history, um, they were basically uh, gold in majority of those events. And this year, 2008, was no different. They were planning on being gold, both men and women. But for the first time in history of the modern Olympics, both teams did not make it to the finals. Both teams, during the preliminary heats, both teams dropped the baton while they were running. For those who don't know what a relay is, or you've never, never quite seen one before, um, you basically, it's a, run, it's a race with four runners. They begin the race with a baton, and they pass it to the next runner, and the next runner passes it to the third runner, and then they pass it to the fourth runner where they finish the race. But this year, I think I have a picture of, of, of one of the guys in the moment that they captured the moment. They captured both the men and the women moment. But this right here in this moment was when he dropped the baton, and you can see it on his face that this moment was going to be his, his, his moment of... of of defeat, so they didn't get into the, 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 uh, the finals. And I was, as I was preparing for this message this Sunday, as I was preparing for this whole theme and this whole talk and this whole graduation Sunday, God was showing me a relationship in the scripture that I wanted to just emphasize this morning. And it was a relationship between Paul and Timothy. And I'm gonna dig more into that in a second, but, but this story came up as I was thinking about Paul and I was thinking about Timothy and I was thinking about what the transition between Paul and Timothy was. This story right here came up. And what's cool about this morning is we get to celebrate those who graduate. We get to celebrate those who are graduating high school and those who are graduating college. And we get to talk and, and celebrate this incredible milestone in their life. But this morning, not only are the graduates on my heart, but there's another group of people that are on my heart, and it's you parents. It's you parents. A few weeks ago, we got the chance to celebrate mothers, and we got to do, we had a message about you, we had a gift for you, and in a few weeks, we're gonna celebrate the fathers, and we're gonna have a gift for you as well. We're gonna, we're gonna showcase you two as a group of parents that are also deserving of celebration this morning. It's also deserving of celebration around graduation because graduation is this incredible milestone and it's a, remar it's a reminder of the impact that you parents are making on your students' lives. And this, I went to about two graduations this past month and I'll, I'll be going to a third one this week and I'm super excited. It's always fun to go. Even when they're 1,200 students and we're looking for one or two out of a two-hour ceremony. Um, it's still fun to be there. It's still cool to see the amount of people that are there to support young 17 and 18-year-olds as they make this step. There's about 3.5 million students that graduate every year. That means millions of parents are watching their kids walk across the stage and transition from their child to their young adults. And I don't know if you've had a parent 
And I don't know if you had a child graduate yet, but it's such a huge moment. And I'm glad that I get to just see a small part of that in, in, in my youth ministry. I get to be a part of um, the four or five years that they're with me and to see them grow up and to see them transition to that. It's such an incredible feeling. And, and in a lot of ways, graduation marks the end of one leg of the race and the beginning of another leg of the race. You see, in the months that follow graduation, the move to college, or for those who are going into the workforce, workplace here, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a transitional moment marked by independence. It is a sign of independence as you graduate high school and as you graduate college. And for me, I've had the opportunity to be a part of this transition. When I was in high school, I graduated. And a lot of us, if not the majority of us have had that moment of transition into what it means to be independent, what it means to, to spend the time to, to graduate, but also now to be on your own. And for some of us, and this is where the message came from, for some of us, it may not be graduation, but for some of us, we are in a transition today in our own life of some sort. You see, I thought about that in my own life. Becky and I, my wife, we, uh, this past year has been this crazy, cool, amazing transition. It was, a, it was a year ago today, I think, if not the third, that we gave our notice of, being, of leaving our last church. It was extremely hard. We were there about two years, three years. And I remember having that conversation with my senior pastor and talking about how I don't know what I'm doing next. I don't know. We don't have a church in lined up. We don't know what's going on, but we do believe that God has something planned for us. So it was cool as that whole summer from June, we prayed and we thought about it and we, we, I fasted and we, we knew that God had a place for us. And then through conversations and through the working of, of the Holy Spirit and through the working of God behind the scenes, he led me and led us to this beautiful church today. And we have made this transition and we felt so good about it. We've left our home of, of 20 plus years in Oklahoma to spend our life now here in Ohio. And we've made friends and families and, and we've planted seeds for tradi traditions moving forward. And we are so excited. And, and we've come to this point this past month where we felt like, okay, we're, things are calm now. Things are good. We're finally settled in our transition. We've now been here for about eight, nine months and we're feeling good now. We found a routine. And then we decided that uh, we needed to buy a home. So now, <laughs> now we're transitioning from apartment to our very first home. This, this weekend, we close and we move in. So now we're having to figure out what it means to be homeowners and what it means to, to start a family in our own home. And that transition is exciting and great. Um, and we're super pumped for that. But it's another transition. It's another transition that one of our legs of the race is finishing, but another one is beginning. And when I think about transition, when I think about this for us church, when I thought about graduation, that's when God said, look in Paul and Timothy's life. Look into Paul and look in Timothy. And I thought about this. So if you have your Bibles, uh, turn to, pay, uh, to uh, 2 Timothy. We're gonna be in the book of 2 Timothy here. And many times when I go to camp or I get asked what's my favorite book of the Bible, it's so hard for me not to say Timothy, the first and second books, because it's my name and everything. But it's also hard because of how I was raised. Um, my parents, my family, they weren't, I didn't come from a Christian background. My parents, they, my mom's starting to go to church with my dad. It's not, they, don't, they don't believe in God and they, they know what I believe and they, they, they support me and, and I have conversations with them when I can. So it's an ongoing process, but I didn't grow up in a Christian home. So whenever I became seventh grade, when I was in seventh grade, about 12, 13, I had my youth pastor pour into me. His name was Jared Nunn. And I remember our conversation, our relationship built so much that it built to the point where I knew that I was changed from our relationship, but I knew I was changed from our relationship with Jesus. And, and through all his mentorship, got me into the conversation of wanting to be a youth pastor, got me into this moment. So when I thought about transitions and I thought about the students that are graduating, I thought about this relationship between Paul and Timothy. And, if, and we know of Paul, of course, as the author of the majority of the New Testament. Strong, strong believer. He's, he's, he pushed 
And he was incredible when it came to talking about Jesus and it came to sharing his word and encouraging churches, planting churches. And we know of Timothy through Acts chapter 16, verses one through three, where Paul is meeting Timothy. And it says, Paul came to Derbe and then to Lystra where a disciple named Timothy lived, whose mother was Jewish and a believer, but his father was Greek. The believers at Lystra and Iconom spoke well of him. And Paul wanted to take him along the journey, so he circumcised him because of the Jews who lived in that area, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. So we see here very early on in Timothy's life that people have spoke highly of him, that God has said, I'm calling Timothy out for a purpose and a, and a reason. And Paul said, I want Timothy to be a part of this journey. So he called him. And we see this relationship extend beyond just this moment. We see this relationship extend when Paul starts traveling and journey and he brings Timothy along and eventually Timothy goes to be a part of a church. And that's where the first and second letters of Timothy come in. And we see in chapter two of 2 Timothy verse one, we see this language that, that Paul is writing and he's signifying this, this transition of some sort. He's saying, he's saying, Timothy, I have a plan for you in this church. Listen, and here's what I got for you. So he says this in, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. And it says, Timothy, my dear son, be strong through the grace that God gives you in Christ Jesus. You have heard me teach these things that have been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Now teach these truths to other reliable and trustworthy people who will be able to pass them on to others. Yeah, I, tell my, I tell my youth group all the time that scripture when we read it over and over again, it changes. It changes. When, when you read it one day, the next day you read it, it's compl- it feels a little different. God's showing you something else. So this morning, I'm encouraging as we read these words, as we think about this, I pray that you understand that the word is alive and that I hope we can take something away. And when I read this, so this is, the, this is what I, I was digging into Paul and Timothy's life. And when I read this, that's when that relay race came up, came in mind. That's when that story of the 2008 Olympics came up. I was thinking where in, the, in, in this Olympics did a transition happen? But here's what's cool about this verse here and about this, about this is that Paul, before he even begins talking about the race, before he even begins talking about a transition, he encourages Timothy, he says, my dear son, be strong through the grace that God has given you in Christ Jesus. He said, before you even begin running, there's a grace that has been given to you that you need to be strengthened by. I don't know if you are a runner. I ran a lot in high school and a little bit in college. But before you even run, you're stretching. You're preparing. Whether it's wearing running clothes instead of sweats and flip-flops, you're preparing. You're putting on the tennis shoes. And Paul's writing here. He said, before you even begin to run, Understand that you are strengthened by the saving grace that Christ Jesus has given us. That is incredible. And he says that before he even begins talking about how to make the transition. And then he goes in. You see, in a relay, there's four runners. And in this scripture here, Paul is, is, is highlighting four runners. He's saying, you have heard me teach these things. Paul is saying, I have, I'm running and I have ran the race. He later writes, he says, I fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Paul is saying that I have ran the race already and now it's time for you to run the race. I'm passing it on to you. I'm passing it on to you, Timothy. And you now have this responsibility, it says, to teach these things. And then it goes on to the second and the third leg. So we have our first leg, our first runner is Paul. Our second runner is Timothy. And now our third runner is trustworthy people. It's reliable witnesses. He says this because he understands, hey, Timothy, you're in a church now. You're in this place in Ephesus. Teach the reliable witnesses around you. Treat those trustworthy people. And so then it finishes with the fourth leg. So then they who will be able to pass them on to others. And the race is going. There's our relay to Paul, to Timothy, to, to trustworthy people and to, then to others. See, I love the picture that's created in the scripture. I love it because when I think about the church, this is the image that Paul is writing. He's telling us, he's saying, this is the church. 
This is the church. Jesus has strengthened the church before we begin running. Then there's people who have ran before us who's passing it on to, to, to Mark, to me, to the pastoral staff, then we get to pass it on to the trustworthy people, to the church, and then you, as the trustworthy people, as the church, get to pass it on to the others, the ones that are not in this room, the ones that, are, that don't feel loved, the ones that are away from the church, the ones that are, that are feeling broken. This is the beautiful picture. And when I think about this picture, I, it, it's so easy. And so, so, so I'm so quick to think about the youth ministry. See, my role is to come alongside the parents and the leaders to see students move past a religion into an authentic relationship with Christ. Amen. That is my purpose as a youth pastor. But here's what's cool is I don't wanna just see that relationship in the youth ministry. I wanna see that relationship go beyond our walls so when they do graduate or when they go into work, they get to share it with the others Amen. that don't hear this on a daily basis. But the trick is, and, the, and, and the, the kicker is that so many times I see in youth ministry and in the church, and this is unfortunate, but I, there's a lot of bad handoffs and drop batons throughout the years. For me, I've, I've made my fair share of, of bad handoffs but for me, it's all about when I see that student grow and start to think about their relationship and make it personal. When I get into that age in sixth grade or seventh grade and to see them grow from that to eighth and ninth and then to high school and to see them transition into life, it's so cool to see that. But this idea this morning, this message extends beyond youth ministry. It extends to the parents and the grandparents here. It extends to the, to the bosses and to the, and to the workers. And it extends to the teachers, the small group leaders, the Sunday school teachers, those who volunteer in children, those who help out in the, pan, in the food pantry and women's ministry. And all the ministries, it extends beyond that. It's for any believer in Jesus that who wants to live out that call in, in your life. We've been called to pass the baton. We've been called to go and make disciples of all nations. So if you're in this room today, you've been called to pass the baton to another. But here's my first thought this morning. If we wanna pass the baton, we have to understand what is our baton that we're passing. It has to be the right baton. Amen. You see, for runners in a relay, there's a certain baton and a certain tube that they have to have. There's a certain weight it has to be. There's a certain size it has to be. There's a certain material it has to be. So that way it's easy to pass. And, it's, it, and it's, there's a rules on the, the dimensions and all this stuff. And for runners, this is their baton. But for us, what is our baton? And that's the gospel. It's the good news. It's this incredible story that's told from beginning to end of a God that loves his people and a, and a God that has watched his people rebel, but then a God has brought a king to save his people. And we read about it, and this is our baton. This is the baton that we are passing as a church. It's the scriptures, it's, it's, the, it's the incredible news and sometimes, unfortunately, when it comes to investing in others, when it comes to, to, to pouring into others, we sometimes get focused on, on good things, but they're not always the right things. Sometimes if it's for your, for your student, for your kid, it's about the good grades, it's about the success, the athletic success, or it's about scholarships, or it's about something material. And for others, it's, it's about doing good. It's about doing right. And sometimes we get so focused on the good things that we lose sight of the God things. That sometimes we get so focused on the good things, we lose sight of the God things. And parents, I want to talk to you just for a second. I want to talk to you just for a second. As I interact with, with, with parents during this graduation season, as I interact with, with those and, and my years of spending time with youth, I, I hear the statements they grow up so fast. 
So my, my encouragement this morning is that, is that we have to have the right baton, but the space to pass the baton is limited. You see, in a relay race, there's this, there's this part where, where it's marked, it's called the takeover lane. And they only have a certain amount of time to give the baton to, another, to the other runner. If they don't do that in the takeover lane, they're disqualified and they can't run the race anymore. So parents, I, I encourage you that as your students, they're getting so tall, you know, they're growing up so fast in front of your eyes. I wanna encourage you that there will be a date, though, that is coming, that they will leave your home. But I challenge you, there's nothing more spiritually valuable than your presence when they are present in your home. Make the most of the time you have with them. But I want to be clear here, is that the, this, this involves kids, and this is where my youth ministry, this is where my heart goes. But it, goes, it extends beyond that to anyone to us pouring into another. And I'm not saying there's an age limit. I'm not saying there's a timeline because remember um, the, the thief next to Jesus on his last breath, he gave his life to Jesus and he gets to see the promise and he gets to see this beautiful time and this beautiful, and I'm just so, I'm saying that yes, I'm encouraging you. There's, there's time is limited. And we have to make the most of the time that we have with others, the ones we are investing in, the ones that you've thought about to this morning, the ones you thought about this past few years of, oh, I need to pour into them. God does bring people in our life for a season. He does bring people in our life for a season. I've seen that in my life. I've seen that in those around me. And Paul encourages us to make the most of every opportunity. We have to pass this baton of good news and we have to do it because we have to do it quickly at times. And we have to do it intentionally at times. So that's my encouragement for all of us is that if you have someone in mind that you are thinking about pouring into as they, or thinking about helping them transition from a religion into an authentic relationship with Christ, understand that you have this time right now. My second thought is, and this is where the Summer Olympics comes in, and this is where um, I definitely want to spend a little time, is that a drop baton is not the end of the race. See, one of the rules of the United States track and fields is this. It says, the baton shall be carried by hand throughout the race. If dropped, it shall be recovered by an athlete who dropped it. He or she may leave the assigned lane to retrieve the baton, provided no other runner is impeded, and provided that by doing so, the distance is covered, is not lessened. You see, when I read this story and I looked up this, I thought the drop baton meant they were disqualified, and that's why they didn't go to the finals. But it made it very clear, and the rules make it very clear, as long as the one who dropped it picks it back up. It also makes it clear that the runner doesn't get in the way of others as they pick it back up. It also says they don't cut the distance short. They don't cheat the distance as they pick up the baton. So it means that if you, are dropped, if you have dropped the baton, that means in order to keep running, you pick it up. You don't get in the way of others and you don't cheat to get to the finish line. When I saw this and I read this, I looked up, the, I watched the video of the, of the men and the women's relay. And in the women's relay, you see her drop the baton and you see her freak out. You see her get super mad. And it cuts to the, the beginning of the race where the, where the Jamaicans and the, and, the, and the rest of the crew, the Jamaican who won that race, you see her finish it. But then it cuts back to the United States woman who picked up the baton and is running the race and finishing it. You see, when I read it, I thought that was the end when they dropped it. But to see her could finish that race with a baton with tears in her eyes, knowing that she just messed up for her team and her country. You see, we're ta I wanna talk about spiritual trans transitions this morning. When I think about spiritual transitions, when I think about transitioning, this comes up because unfortunately, when I think about students in, in the student ministry, when I think about those in the church, there's a lot of research telling us that people are leaving the faith by incredible numbers. And for students, they're abandoning their faith when they leave 
the youth group and go into college years. According to the Barna and Gallup um, group who do statistics about churches in, around the world, around 40 and 60% of graduates who are involved in the youth group will fail to stick to their faith during their college years. That's half of the youth group, of the half of the youth that are going to college will not stick to their faith. And that's personal to me, obviously. And that's, that's hard for me to hear those statistics like that. And, but, and a lot of times the response to this is to play the blame game. This is the rough part. Is sometimes the response to this is, oh, it's the youth group's fault because all they do is eat pizza and play games. Or it's the parents' fault because they're failing in their responsibility to be the spiritual leader of the home. Or the blame is, oh, it's the church's fault because they're irrelevant and hypocritical to the point that the younger generation wants nothing to do with it. The blame gets passed around, and to me, I find this entire conversation frustrating. And don't get me wrong, I'm sure there is, there is some blame to go around. But when I, and I, when I think about the church and I think about the idea that we're blaming things or blaming other people and blaming other ministries and blaming other things, I get a picture of if the United States were in that moment and they dropped the baton, them sitting there saying, well, you dropped it or, or you had the bad handoff and they're sitting there not finishing the race. They're sitting there arguing about a dropped baton instead of picking it back up and running and finishing that race. You see, with the United States track and field rules here and also with what Paul is writing to Timothy, the key is responsibility. Paul is writing a letter to Timothy to, to, to show him, I'm giving you this responsibility to be the leader of the church, to be a leader, to pass on the good news. It is your responsibility. And with any spiritual transition, any transition in general, whether it's with one of the students or with another Christian or with yourself, we need to stop talking about the drop baton and walking toward and picking the baton up and digging into it. You see, this morning, we're gonna get to celebrate some of our graduates this morning. I'm gonna have them come up here. We're gonna gonna kind of talk a little bit about them. But before I do that, I wanna challenge you guys. I wanna challenge all of us See, this morning, if you've never received the baton, if you've never understood, if you never knew what it's like to have a life that comes through having this incredible relationship with Christ, I'm encouraging you today. I'm encouraging you today to, to pick up the baton, to get the baton. Think about what are you carrying? Are you holding on to just trying to live a good life Or are you and would you be willing to carry the baton that is the saving grace that whenever you feel down and whenever you feel like a mistake, whenever you feel broken, that you have a baton that says otherwise. I encourage you this morning, if that is you, I pray to begin having that conversation with other trustworthy, reliable people here. Or if you're in this room, And maybe you have fumbled the baton as you've tried to pass it on to someone else. That you said, oh, I've passed the baton to others, but I've fumbled it. Maybe that's through hypocritical living or maybe through neglect. Whatever the case is, I encourage you to pick it back up so you can pass it on to others. There are people in this room and there are people outside this church that need you to pick that baton up pick that baton up and pass it on. But there are those in this room that have received that baton and have ran, but then have dropped it. Maybe that's through you've turned your back on God. Maybe that's you're so caught up in your own selfish desires. Maybe that's, it's just the slow drop through apathy and, and, and distractions. Peter is encouraging you this morning. He writes in 1 Peter 5, 10, And the God of all grace, who calls you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. So pick that baton up. 
and get back in the race. And for those this morning, as I think about graduation, as I think about the transition there, for those who are carrying the baton into that takeover lane, the moment where you pass the baton to someone else, that's the parents, that's the teachers, that's the coaches, that's the boss, that's the small group leaders, that's the Sunday school teachers, that's everyone who has a Timothy in their life, anyone that has someone that they're pouring into. This is also the one who's been wa- walking with Jesus for, for years, but have never considered investing in others. I'm encouraging you today, now is that time. Who are you going to pass the baton to, church? Because I'm seeing incredible students graduate and they are gonna need this church. They're going to need those, those around them to pour into them, to love on them as a step foot into the next step of their life and the next journey that God has for them. So at this time, I wanna ask our graduates to come up here. So again, this morning, I get the chance to, to, uh, to celebrate our high school graduates, but also get to celebrate those who are graduating college this morning. I'm so excited. Um, even though, yes, I've only been here since September, the, the relationships that I've built with these students and other college students comes down as well. I'm so excited to be able to, be a, to share a little bit about what they've accomplished and what they're going to do next. Um, we have, we have a gift for them as well, but if, and afterwards, after we, I tell you a little bit about them and a little bit about what they're doing next, I want to, uh, we're gonna pray for them as they move forward. We're gonna pray for them. So this morning, um, I have, I'm gonna have Chelsea over here, I have our high school students over here t- to my right, your left, I know. <laughs> but this morning, it's really cool because I have a, we have Alana Hartman over here on the far right here, your left. She just graduated from Middletown High School, and she's studying nursing at Sinclair Community College next year, so it's exciting to see that. And then we have Mr. Robbie Hall here, who's graduated, who's graduated from Lakota High School with honors, and he's planning on attending Wright State University to study mechanical engineering. Then we have Ms. Josie Graff, our last high school student who's graduating. She's graduating with honors from Butler Tech and Lakota High School, Val Victorian of her Butler Tech Bioscience. She's planning on attending Wright State University to study biological science. Got some smart kids up here. Got some smart students up here. So yeah, give them a round of applause. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this morning, this morning we also get to celebrate our college graduates. I'll get out of the way here for this. We get to celebrate our college graduates as well. We have Ms. Kim Zulock, who's a, who just graduated from Colorado Christian University in two bachelors because she's impressive, Bachelor of Science in Accounting and Bachelor of Arts in Biblical Studies. Currently, she's working as a tax manager and she's gonna be planning on becoming a children's pastor, so that's exciting there. And there it is, got a little loose. And then we have Ms. Chelsea Lamasa, my friend. She studied, she just graduated from Miami University with a master's in liter- literacy and language. I'm messing up my literacy and language as I'm telling her, you my master. But she's continuing teaching at Baybeck Early Childhood Center, Center, and it's gonna be so cool to see her work with those kids there. We also have Ms. Laura Stamper. Ms. Laura Stamper, so she's graduating from Miami University, Bachelor of Arts in English Studies, currently working, oh, sorry, I apologize, in nursing. Yeah. I was thinking about Samuel there, because Samuel, so Bachelor of Science in Nursing, and she'll be starting at Miami Valley on the Labor and Delivery Unit, so that's going to be a blessing there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then Mr. A.J. Pennington, Mr. A.J. here, he just graduated from Kettering Medical College, summa cum laude, Mm -hmm. starts July at Kettering as a respiratory therapist, so it's exciting for that, so uh, yeah, for sure. For sure, for sure. And this morning, we also have another graduate, uh, Mr. Samuel Wallace. He's uh, back there doing help with live stream. He is graduating from Miami University, Bachelor of Arts in English Studies. He's currently working at health, healthcare IT and plans to pursue his master's in technical writing. So please, please give a round of applause to his graduates this morning as they make the transition. And we will, 
I wanted to give a gift to my students here. I wanted to give them a literal baton as they move forward into college, as they can put in their dorm, put in their room as a reminder of their youth ministry, as a reminder of their time here, and a reminder to pass on the baton to others. But for the, for the college grads, I wanted to give them a book um, as encouragement, as they go into, as they could take something practical, read. It's called Welcome to Adulting. So I felt like that was fitting. I thought that was fitting. But as we finish, I want to pray for our graduates, and I want to encourage you guys to add these graduates to your prayer list. I want, to, I want you to encourage them when you see them. Um, we are excited for what God has for them. Um, and Paul writes to Timothy, and this is what's my last message, my last thought here. And he writes to Timothy in chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. He says, this is why I remind you to fan into flames the spiritual gift that God has given you when I laid my hands on you to prayer. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power and love and self-discipline. And I want to encourage you graduates, remember that as you guys move forward. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we are so thankful for this morning. We are so thankful for who you are. We are so thankful for your son, Jesus Christ, and the strength that we are given by his saving grace, Lord. Continue to show us those around us that we can pass the baton to others. And for those who are in the process of passing the baton, I pray you encourage us that it's not about us, Lord, it's about you. It's about you and it will always be about you. Let us love those around us. Let us love those that we're gonna be in contact with, Lord. And for those who are needing to carry the baton, I pray you begin, your Holy Spirit works in the hearts of all those in this room today. Lord, we love you. We thank you for the graduates this morning. And we pray that their life reflects you in every possible way as they move forward. And it's in Jesus' incredible name we pray. Amen. 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 You guys can give a thanks so much. Yes.